All comments. I want to ask, who checked the weather report this morning? And did you notice that it said mostly sunny? <laughs> I got to tell you, in Ithaca, this is what we call mostly sunny. <laughs> I am just so excited to welcome all of you. There are 3,218 new students. You're coming here from 39 countries, 49 states, plus Puerto Rico, the District of Columbia, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Take a second, which state do you think is missing? Wyoming. The answer is unfortunately Montana. Next year we'll be out recruiting in Montana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are members of the classes of 2021, 22, and 23. You're freshmen and you're transfer students. You're from rural, urban, and suburban communities. Some of you are military veterans. Some of you are new ROT cadets. You're coming from an incredibly incredible diversity of backgrounds. You speak more than 40 languages. Many of you are the first in your family to attend college. You come here with interests that span all of our 100 plus academic departments and beyond. And the first thing I want to say to you, reiterating what my fellow speakers have said, is that no matter where you've come from, no matter what path brought you here, you belong here. From today on, you are all Cornellians. Oh, yeah, Cornellians. And then the months ahead, every single one of you will have the chance to make your mark on Cornell, just as Cornell will have the chance to make its mark on you. And at the end of that time, you and I will be back here again at Showcall Field at your commencement. You won't be sitting in the bleachers, you'll be sitting on chairs in the field with your fellow graduates waiting to receive your degrees. So I want you to close your eyes for a moment, just a moment, and imagine that day. It's 11 o'clock in the morning on a sunny, because it's always sunny in the mm -hmm. Memorial Day weekend. Instead of wearing shorts and t-shirts, you're in caps and gowns. And instead of looking forward to your time at Cornell, you're looking backwards at all the experiences you've had here. Okay, you can open your eyes. I want to tell you something about that moment and about how you will be different then. You will have just completed your education at Cornell. And a Cornell education is something that can and should change your lives. It should help you develop not only a capable intellect, but also a mature conscience. It should prepare you not only for a job, but also for your lives as citizens of this nation and the world. There's a fabulous line by the author Richard Russo from a graduation speech that he gave a few years ago. He said this, sending kids off to college is a lot like putting them in a witness protection program. Mm -hmm. If the person who comes out is easily recognizable as the same person who went in, then something has gone terribly, dangerously wrong. Mm -hmm. But to truly have the transformative experience that you came to Cornell to find, you need to seek it out. Becoming educated is not a passive activity. Everyone here today is giving you advice, and I could talk for a very long time giving you advice, talk to you about everything you should do if you want to make the most of your time at Cornell. I could tell you to try new things, to take courses in subjects you never even knew you could study, from the language of honeybees to the code of Hammurabi. I could urge you to try one of our more than 1,000 clubs where you can learn improv or Japanese taiko drumming, entrepreneurship or organic farming, sign language or sustainable design. I could tell you, again, as have my fellow speakers, not to be afraid to fail. In fact, I can almost guarantee that you will have moments where you will struggle. You'll have setbacks, perhaps even hard failures. But that's okay. You'll learn from them, and you'll also learn how to pick yourself up and move on. If you never fail, 
you haven't been pushing yourselves hard enough. I could tell you to take care of yourself, to get well, to exercise, and yes, I know you don't think this is going to happen to you, but you really should get enough sleep. Your health and your happiness depend on it, even though there will always be something else that you could be doing instead of turning out the light. I could tell you all of those things. In fact, I just did. <laughs> and while there's more advice I could give, I doubt you'd remember much of it. You've got too much on your minds already. So I'm gonna give you just one piece of advice today that I hope you'll remember and that I hope you will take to heart. One piece of advice to help you make the most of your time here, to enable you to engage more fully with all the opportunities you'll have at Cornell, to ensure that you leave Cornell with that education you came here for. If there's one piece of advice that I want you to remember from everything I say today, you should remember what everybody else said, but of the things I say today, mm -hmm. here's what I want you to remember. Take off your headphones. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> it was about seven or eight years ago that I first noticed the phenomenon of people walking around with earbuds in. I was in DC and I needed directions to the metro but everyone I passed on the street had earbuds in. And those earbuds signaled to me, as earbuds do, that this person was otherwise engaged, unavailable at the moment. I was shut out and I shouldn't be asking them for directions. I did find the Metro eventually. And over the next few years, I noticed that the earbuds moved over a little bit and those big beat style headphones moved in. <laughs> And as I drive into work at Cornell every morning, I see dozens of students wearing these as they walk to class. They're all walking in the same direction, but they're not walking together. They're not listening to each other. Instead, they're listening to whatever is coming in through their headphones. The visual image is even more striking. They're saying, I am in my world, not the world around me. I am listening to someone else, not the human beings beside me. Most recently, the shift seems to be to AirPods. Now, they're at least a little smaller than the big headphones, but they represent a different kind of distraction because they're often left in constantly. They say, I may be partly here, but I'm only ever partly here. Okay, I hear you all saying, well, so what? This is 2019 and we're the tech generation. We're connecting to the larger world. We're connecting in new and different ways to something beyond our immediate environment. Why isn't that a good thing? It's a fair question with a few answers. But I'll start with one that's specific to Cornell. You came to Cornell for an experience you could only find here. And so what I'm really asking you to do when I ask you to take off your headphones is not to block that experience out, but to open yourself to it. So when I say take off your headphones, first I mean literally. When you are attending to your headphones, you're not attending to the world around you. You're not hearing the bird or the winds or the airplane overhead. I used to attend a concert series whose motto was be present. The idea was that when you were at the concert, you should not only shut off your phone, but you should also turn off your mind to all the distractions beyond the music and fully immerse yourself in that music. If you're multitasking, if you're listening to music or a podcast or whatever else while you're walking, you're not present. You're somewhere else. And you're also telling everyone else around you that you're somewhere else. Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes you won't want to give directions to the metro. If you have a prelim tomorrow, or and, and because of that, you uh, don't want to be bothered unless the library's on fire. <laughs> or you're at a silent disco. I hear that's a thing. I didn't know about that until yesterday. And there's one at, at orientation. If you're at that silent disco, sure, put your headphones on. I think it's kind of weird myself, but go ahead, enjoy the silent disco. But keeping them on all day sends the signal all day, don't talk to me. I'm not available. I'm not here to connect to. Over time, the result of that choice is going to be much more significant than just never being the one to get asked for directions. Ultimately, it means you won't connect, or at least you won't connect as deeply or as often with the people and the experiences that you came here to Cornell for. You won't strike up people, conversations with the people sitting next to you in class or standing in line for stir fry or waiting for office hours. No one will ask you, what did you think of that book? Or tell you, 
I hear they're out of chicken, but the tofu is great. Or say, do you want to try and work on that problem set together while we're waiting for the TA? Now, you might not need help with that same problem and you might not have wanted chicken anyway. But those conversations in that moment, although they may seem lightweight and even trivial, ultimately link us together in ways that are critically important. Because relationships and community are built over time in seeing each other and connecting to each other again and again. And to connect, you need to be available. You need to be present in the moment for and with the people around you. So take off your headphones. But it isn't enough just to take them off physically. You also need to take them off in the larger sense. You need to stop shutting out the world around you. Listen to it. Listen to ideas that may seem to you to be wrong, even offensive. Shove those headphones deep into your backpack and seek out people with different perspectives and ideas and backgrounds. Listen to them and make it a point to engage in reasoned discourse with them. Find out why they think what they do. Because it's only by hearing and engaging and grappling with different ideas that we learn. A reasoned debate with someone with whom you disagree might just change your mind. Or you might find, as you share and listen, a thought that leads you to refine your own thinking or to want to learn more. You may not come to agree at all with the other person, but you may learn something interesting and important about their motivations. And lead, it might lead you to thoughtfully agree to disagree. And even if you still end up in vehement disagreement, even disgust, you will have flexed your mental muscles in clarifying exactly why you disagree. You will have learned how to engage and respond in a way that is productive. And when you do that, you'll be getting the education you came for. At Cornell, we have six core values articulated and formalized last year through a community-wide process of reflection and feedback. They are purposeful discovery, free and open inquiry and expression, a community of belonging, exploration across boundaries, changing lives through public engagement, and respect for the natural environment. You'll hear more about those values as you participate in your orientation experiences over the next week. But for now, I want very, very briefly just to say a little bit about the first three. Purposeful discovery. You came to Cornell to discover in a way you could not anywhere else take advantage of what is here. You may never again find yourself in a place that is so full of incredibly talented and intelligent people, of opportunities to try new things, of scope for new interests. So talk to your fellow students, get to know your professors and your TAs. Purposeful discovery means not just seeking, but valuing knowledge and valuing truth wherever it's found. Second, free and open inquiry and expression. Ezra Cornell aspired to found an institution where any person could find instruction in any study. Cornell is a uniquely American university built on uniquely American ideals of diversity, openness, and free speech. Any person, any study is a reflection of that legacy, of our founding principle that an institution that is open to people and to ideas will create a better environment for learning that is than one that is narrow and whom it will admit or what it will teach. Those ideals are now your responsibility. And third, a community of belonging. The first thing I said to you today, again repeating what you heard from my fellow speakers, was that all of you, no matter where you're from, no matter what your background, your interest, or your experience, all of you belong here. You have the right to study and to learn, to speak, and to be heard. But in order to speak and to hear and to be heard, you can't have your headphones on. <laughs> so when you sit down in your classes this week and you're waiting for the professor to start talking, leave your phone in your pocket, say hello to the person next to you, ask their name, ask where they're from, ask what they did over the summer, and at the next class, do it again. Keep your headphones off and your mind open to everything that is here for you at Cornell. And if one of these days you see me walking along campus, I probably won't need to ask you for directions, but come and say hi to me anyway. I promise I won't be wearing headphones. 
We are really and truly so glad to have each of you as new Cornellians. Welcome to you all.